Now, Ghana's finance minister, Ken Oforiata, has assured Ghanaians the government is working hard to get the economy back on track. Speaking at a press conference this morning, he reviewed the government and the International Monetary Fund team are currently undertaking a rigorous debt sustainability analysis to determine the way forward that must be taken to save the economy. Yeah, you know, in the throes of the discussions um, with, with the fund, um, things are going really well uh, in terms of where uh, we want to land um, uh, in three years. Um, the analysis uh, for the debt DSA, debt sustainability analysis, you know, is rigorously going on, and that would inform us uh, by the end um, of these 10 days um, as to what uh, we are going to specifically do uh, in various areas, fiscal adjustment, um, structural reforms, um, debt operations, etc. Uh, but let's rest assured um, that as is want uh, for us to be a very collaborative society, um, we will work with our uh, domestic investors uh, as per through the committee, um, work with our external investors, uh, and come up with a win-win um, solution uh, that, as I mentioned, uh, will be an historic um, solution that has not been seen before. Um, we, we have gone through as a nation uh, very difficult moments and really we are very comfortable that it can be done. Uh, but going on this is also um, we reaching out and people reaching out to it, uh, to us, um, um, to build uh, in a constructive way uh, because that is really important uh, for us to have that peace and harmony, uh, speak that one language. Uh, and um, ensure uh, that the Black Star is where it should be. Um, so yes, uh, I'm confident difficult periods, um, but we have done it before, and the battle is indeed the Lord's. We will get there. He revealed Ghana is approaching the program with the IMF on seven pillars, including debt sustainability. Having a sustainable debt path is a prerequisite for the IMF program, Therefore, the IMF World Bank and the Ghana team are currently undertaking a debt sustainability analysis to inform the program negotiations. In addition, the IMF and government team are working to update the medium-term macro-fiscal framework to inform IMF program design. Also, the government team and the IMF team are discussing policy measures and structural reforms proposed in an economic program aimed at addressing the economic challenges facing the country towards restoring and sustaining macroeconomic stability, fiscal and debt sustainability, as well as promoting durable and inclusive growth and social protection. Ladies and gentlemen, we simply have not reached any agreement with the fund on the parameters of any debt operation as we are in the process of completing the debt sustainability analysis. Government shall continue to actively engage all stakeholders in a clear and transparent manner as we seek to fast track the IMF negotiation process. Ghana needs a viable domestic financial system to support its development program, especially in these three years with limited access to international capital markets. Therefore, everything must and will be done to protect our financial sector and there must be room for a win-win conversation through extensive stakeholder engagement with both our domestic and external investors. Ghana has always had a collaborative approach with its partners, and we shall, I'm confident, come out of an historic arrangement. According to Ken Oferata, a five-member committee has been set up to conduct a broader stakeholder engagement to get everyone's buy-in for the IMF program. Five-member committee consisting of prominent financial services professionals, will lead extensive stakeholder engagement across all the key segments of the financial sector, banking us, asset management, pensions, and insurance. The announcement of the committee members will be made in the coming days, and they will immediately get to work to engage key stakeholders in the financial services sector. Additional to ongoing engagements of civil society organizations, social partners, labor employers and faith-based organizations, academia, industry professionals, and the leadership of parliament. We welcome all contributions to this great public debate, but we must be careful to build and not to tear down our nation. 
He revealed that despite the challenges, the economy recorded some growth. Current year expenditure has also largely been contained owing to the operationalization of expenditure cuts announced since March. We are on course with expenditure rationalization efforts and will continue to enforce strict adherence to these measures across all MDAs whilst ensuring efficient delivery of public services. The Ghana Revenue Authority has intensified its efforts to show up domestic revenue mobilization, particularly in relation to the enforcement of compliance measures. The increased visibility of GR officials at shopping malls and various commercial establishments and our, at our borders across the country is in pursuit of meeting our revenue objectives. Such exercises form part of an ongoing drive to ensure we take significant steps forward in remedying long-standing challenges with domestic revenue mobilization, indiscipline, corruption, and leakages. Of course, heightened tax compliance and increased tax audit exercises will continue to be complemented by policy initiatives that allow us to tap into a wider pool of taxpayers in the years ahead. Um, towards this, therefore, um, we are looking at areas around the e-levy um, to ensure its efficient implementation. Overall, our growth outturn of 3.4%, an impressive 4.8% in Q1 and Q2 of 2022 respectively, coupled with modest improvements in our fiscal position, suggest our economy is gradually on the upswing despite the numerous shocks we have faced over the past two years. To other stories now, and education authorities in the Ejiso municipality in the Ashanti region have withdrawn teachers from the Besiansi M.A. Junior High School after parents allegedly assaulted a female teacher for shaving the hair of a student. The teacher, Janet Sewa Ampafo, sustained injuries after being pulled in the hair and dragged on the ground by two women. She has been on admission at the Ejiso Government Hospital following the attack. Ohim interior of our security desk has small in the following report. Officials say the decision to withdraw the teachers was to protect their lives. The teacher incurred the wrath of the parents after she cut through the hair of a male from two students. Some students allege the boy used a blade stick to shave portions of the hair to instigate the attack on the teacher. Last Friday, immediately after the incident, I went there with my director to the hospital. We saw her. We saw the attire that she was wearing, especially the knee. It was very, very, very dirty. So you could see that it truly they dragged her. I'm not taking this kindly at all because uh, uh, director sent those teachers there to teach, not to be beaten up or maybe killed. So that we are taking it very, very serious. That is why uh, we had to withdraw the teachers in the school. With the withdrawal of the teachers, academic activities have ceased in the junior high school as students idle on campus. Final year students engaged in super mock exams are mostly affected. These students loitering claim to have witnessed the attack. All the schools are writing their mock exams, but here we are idling about. Schools in Mensha are writing the mock exams. I want school to reopen so we can take part in the mock. Education authorities insist the teachers will return to the classrooms only when the corporates are arrested. Michael Jartin is public relations officer at the education directory. Technically, the school was not closed down. We had to withdraw our teachers for their own safety. But uh, fortunately, this morning, the, the chief of Bisiansi and some Zongo uh, leaders, they came to meet with management of uh, GES, the director and his management. So we have resolved that uh, starting tomorrow, they will go to, the teachers will report to school. Uh, but we have asked them to produce the corporates so that the law can take its court. Community leaders are worried over the development. They have been organizing such parties for the suspects who have since gone into hiding. George Chremartin is the assembly member for the Besiansi Jamasi electoral area. 
The situation has affected Form 3 students. They couldn't write their mock exams. It has also brought so much shame on the community. Everywhere you go, people are talking about us. We don't want to hear this again in this town. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interior reporting. Joy News Check indicates that uh, two of the women who more treated the madame have been arrested. Ohime Interior is in the community and joins me live with more details. Ohime, good afternoon. Thanks for joining. What more do we know? Thank you, Ekojo. The uh, two uh, women identified as Alima Sadia, a hairdresser, and Sewa, all age 30, are uh, believed to have left the onslaught on the female teacher, uh, and this particular attack is what triggered the closure of the Besnyasi MB Junior High School. Uh, so the community, since the incident uh, occurred, uh, has been organizing search party for the women. So yesterday, the first person to be picked up was Alima to uh, Sadia, and then the second person was also arrested by the community and they were handed over to the district police. As we speak, uh, the second person, if they were, has been granted bail on the grounds that uh, she has a one-year-old baby and that the uh, police believe that in order to safeguard the uh, safety of the baby, uh, she has to be granted bail. Uh, but uh, Alima too is still in police custody. Even then, Sewa was asked to report to the police station today, uh, something that she has done. Police say they are also looking for a third person, uh, a, a male uh, accomplice. Mm. Uh, his identity is not yet known, but they say they are still looking for the third uh, suspect uh, in this uh, particular incident. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Oheming, for that update. Now, our Greek experts are advocating the adaptation of climate change-friendly technologies to ensure an all-year-round sustainable crop production in Ghana. Farmers in the country are grappling with low crop yield owing to unpredictable weather patterns and poor soil quality. This has led to short supply of food staff in general, with the little available being sold at astronomical prices. The expert, are, however, convinced the situation would improve if farmers adapt the new technologies. There's more in the following report. Speaking at an EU program on how to adapt agriculture to climate change in Ghana, Agriculture Development Program Assistant for CMAFED Ghana, Grace Ifuam Ponsa, says using latest technologies can make life better for farmers. We are looking at how to use technology to make a, a great fun, right? So the AI, right? Um, I, I I'll give an example, an organi a company called Farmaline. So what they are doing is, these three sectors that I already mentioned, production, service, and um, market, they are digitalizing all the sectors. So like, okay. instead of the traditional value chain that we have, they are making it a digital value chain. Okay. So they use, well, for instance, GPS mapping to like, give the farmer an overview of like what they have right now currently and this will um, advise on how to maybe fertilize the farm when and how and with what and then another interesting thing for the service is like providing climate smart agricultural um, practices in form of uh, a call center an agriculture extension officer Nafisa Maham shared challenges being faced by farmers in northern Ghana Farmers now get low yield when it comes to harvest. And with the weather pattern, the time of planting, they are not certain as to when to start the cropping season. I think there are all factors that are affecting farmers when it comes to climate change. At regular burning of our farmlands, especially after harvest, you see that the farmers go to burn the farmland in the name of making the farm to be clear. And that is not the issue. That residue that could have been retained in the soil is something that can add nutrient back to the soil. 
Senior Agriculture Officer with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Ahmed Gabriela, said government was implementing policies to reduce the impact of climate change on Ghana's agri sector. If, I have the, if, the, if we have the means, mm -hmm. somebody mentioned insurance is a very good thing, but it is because the premium is very high. So but if you have the means, what will you do? What will I, will, you? I, will, I will put intervention like for the for construction of maybe dams or water bodies. Okay. There's that one, one, one thing that there's, can go along There's one village, one dam that... European ambassador to Ghana, Ichad Rizali, explained the significance of the conversation on climate. The other reason why agriculture is important on climate change is if we are able to improve the practices, we can use agriculture as a lever to address the consequences of climate change. So for us it was a no-brainer to use this uh, platform to seek the um, relations, intricacies between uh, climate change and agriculture. And the European Union is a very big actor in Ghana when it comes to agriculture. We have an ongoing program of 132 million euros in Ghana, which seeks to address three pillars. First pillar is linked to infrastructure, irrigations, for example, access road, we call them feeder road for the product to access markets. The second pillar is linked to the competitiveness, to the improvement, increasing of the yields and the production. And the third uh, pillar is linked to the regenerative practices because, as I said, to some extent the former practices have depleted the soil. The soils have been washed out by erosion, so on and so forth. So this is, uh, I would say, an holistic program, 132 million euros, in order to address those issues. Now, MPP MP for Adanse Asokwa, Katie Hammond, says it's a shame that some young people are the just ended Global Citizens Festival heckled President Ekufuado when he mounted the stage to deliver a speech. The president was booed by sections of the patrons, drawing mixed reactions from the public. While the MPP MP insists the action was orchestrated by the NDC, the NDC insists it is a reflection of the mood of Ghanaians for what they say is a mismanagement of the economy. Reacting to the issue, Katie Hammond berated those who booed the president, saying it's on Ghanaian and reflect poorly on the country. I think it's scandalous. I think it's scandalous. I don't think as a nation we got into that stage. I mean, I was petrified when I heard it. The president was speaking as soon as he opened his mouth. Or I heard, uh, was it in unison? But if it's that small cabal, whatever it is, I mean, I was, I was, uh, 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 let me repeat the word, petrified. Basically, they didn't understand. I haven't seen anything of this sort in Ghana before. We shouldn't start things which become precedent. You can't handle them. You let the genie out of the bottle, completely difficult to get our lives together. I have been very, very upset. I haven't seen anything like this before. Even on political platforms, we don't do this things. We don't. I mean, so to imagine that on a national platform like this, a president mounts a platform, and all he said, I think he said in key, that the whole of the world or the whole of uh, it's here, and then people start shouting at him. I think it is unfair. We must be ashamed of ourselves. I don't think it is a proper development in our country. And too much shouting uh, connotes an absence of intelligent thinking. So, you know, we're always shouting and shouting. You're not thinking. You know what I mean? You're not thinking. Just, 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 so, need to draw the attention? No, you're drawing the president. Who doesn't know that times are hard? I mean, it's not debatable. We all accept that times are hard. Look, yesterday I was asking... Uh, in the system, I was asking, okay, look, this whole thing had been uh, predicated on the difficulty we have with uh, um, petroleum uh, pricing and then uh, whatever. Prices are coming down um, uh, drastically, as of yesterday. My point is that whatever there is to it, you have no business hooting at the president. I, I, I don't know. Is that you don't have to hoot at your president. It isn't democracy. It isn't right. There should be some respect, you know.
Mpenifoni yon mwa imuwa. Debi ya meka. Asamba ni yasi ye kwa kapa. Ye ya yasi ye kwa 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 abrewa. Yankase ye kwa 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 mwono na 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 Abrewa no e ye opinion. Meanwhile, Katie Hammond says state prosecutors must act tough with Galamse Queen Aisha Mwan, who was yesterday denied bail again by an Accra Circuit Court. I don't know about this. Aisha, Aisha 2, Aisha 3, you know, Aisha 1. What, who is this girl? Aisha this, Aisha that, Aisha that. What, what, what is it about there? Huh? Ah, yes, yeah, she's in court. Let her, let her cause to deal with it. And, uh, you know, I mean, a point in time, she's this, she's this, she's that. Uh, what, she's from where? Uh, from where? From uh, where? What is it about there? Eh? Married to powerful people. Uh, ma is that what? Married to powerful men. Well, well, listen, my friend. A woman can be married to only one man. So what do you mean? Married to what is it? This and that, you know. So I, I don't know about this. Asha, 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 Asha. You spend all your time, Asha, this, uh, I hear you. She won't be, well, submit into anything, she pops out. Well, she's now languishing in jail, isn't it? In uh, uh, custody. A court reminded her uh, into the prison or police custody or something. One of the cases, BNI. BNI. Well, uh, Asha 3, Asha 4, we we'll see how it goes. Now, Christian Bluko is an 85-year-old veteran. He served as bodyguard to Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. But after retiring over three decades ago, Mr. Bluko is living on a meager pension allowance of 47 Ghana cities. This is making life unbearable for the octogenarian. Enjoy Prime's latest future title, The Last Guard. My colleague Emmanuel Jivenu traveled to Adi Dome to speak to the veteran. I'm called Christian Bluko, born here in Adi Dome, 1938. And, uh, I don't know, but everything that God do, you must appreciate it. Christian Bluku is now 85 years old and resides in Mafe Haridome, a community in the Volta region's Central Town District. He spent most of his formative years here. After elementary school, Christian went to learn tailoring and later enlisted in the Workers' Brigade. That was, I left school 57. So we had a, a Ghana certificate, the first one. So after that, my, my father said I should stop the school and come and learn tailoring. So I stopped the school and came. I was born like a, the, a natural soldier. I was in advanced camp in a brigade. But by then, my father to stop it, so he took the machine. He yeah, took the machine to brigade. In 1960, when Ghana became a republic, Mr. Bluku's cousin, a medical doctor, had just returned from abroad. Bluku's family asked him to go and stay with his cousin in Accra for a supposed better life. His visit to Accra eventually brought him closer to the corridors of power. Bluku recounts how his cousin recommended him for a job and how his CPP card earned him a position at the Christian Borg Castle, which was the home of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, at the time. He gave me a note. I should go to State House and then ask of the director. He's called D.S. Kwakupo. But then he and one Mr. Fujo, he uh, retired. I don't know. Uh, Fujo was also from police. He said, easy mama. So I should go to DS in uh, Kokupo for interview. So because he mentioned interview, eh, then I took uh, my certificate. Uh, start, uh, seven from four living, I was starting seven living certificate. I, I had it 57. I took it and all. Plus my CPP party card. If I not uh, had the party card, to, uh, I would have failed the interview. The question, that question, then I put the party card from my pocket and I gave it to him. After a week uh, to get into the second week, the doctor came laughing to the mother and we were there after. They say I had a, a job for uh, uh, Christian. In his active days at the Christian Borg Castle, Mr. Bluku said he was always preoccupied with how to keep the first president safe. 
he told stories about security operations they conducted in the dead of the night. From that place, the I was qualified after probation, then he sent me to castle. Then they confirmed me as a bodyguard uh, to, to Nkuma. Then they, they uh, put me in protection. Because Nkuma at time he used to go out in the night. When he's going here, they, those, those people who are smart in the castle, they, they are, then you have to follow them, follow him. Because bodyguard will not be in the house at night time. You, are you getting me? Yes. So we'll be doing that. At the time I used to go to... <laughs> there are some, anyway, I, I, I have a, what do you call it? Uh, uh, secrecy or what they, they, they do, but now I'm free to speak. At the time I used to go to the uh, seaside, the brass stars spread the, to consult this in the spiritual way, pray, doing pray like how we can't hear we pray. No, so mm. he also used to do that and go to the uh, seaside and pray there, this and that. There are certain things he also, also do. Good. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's ideology was radical. He believed in a new Africa that is independent and free of imperialism. These ideals won him more love and support across the continent, but he later fell out of favor in his own country. We cannot, under any circumstances, allow imperialists and new colonialists to interlock with traitors in our midst to deflect us from the path of duty and progress. Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah survived five assassination attempts. On January 2nd, 1964, Constable Ametepe fired close-range rifle rounds at Nkrumah before being overpowered by his police colleagues. The president was unharmed, but a security guard was seriously injured and died soon after. The octogenarian recounts how events unfolded at the castle after the failed attempt on the life of the president. And he's the one who was uh, this thing. I'm a tape brought down. He was, he was a chief bodyguard. Sally Fudaga, he was given a state barrier. That is why when they give us, say, if you die, they will give you a state barrier and uh, some uh, bonuses from your family. <laughs> but you have to volunteer. That week, I was straight at the tower. By then, I didn't hear, know that anything at all happened. Eh? Yeah. Then he, called, uh, he asked me to stay. Then after seeing people, uh, they say I should stay at the gate and seal the gate for him. Then because they say, tell me uh, the, the instruction is seal the gate. I was get there. For me, I'm serious my work. I was doing that then they say, I saw the camp coming. The car camp, to, uh, you know the, who is he? No. Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Goka. Uh, what he, he was uh, not a finance minister, he still rejected. He has plenty of posts. And deputy minister to help and all these things. Not so. Yes. Then he came and stopped. Well, everybody was, they work with that big man. I like why you are calling girl, Ken Rufuri Atta, all this, the minister of finance, all this, uh, big big uh, Emuri Gala, and all that, uh, directing them to go. They are going there you, because he's from the domain. I know him. He didn't bring me to castle. Then he came after. When I went uh, getting near to the car, he asked me, uh, don't you know me? In the work, literally, you have to be serious. Know you for what? You brought me here. When my people are coming, and all that, we are directing their family to go to Russia and learn and this and that. You put, buy cutlass and put on that your office, hey, people for the domain, you give them to go and farm. Damn here, yeah, you didn't bring me, you say I, I should go, I, I don't say I know you. I know you for her. So he was serious. So he, he passed. Because he charted me, I charted. Me to allow you to go uh, to who am I to go? Oh, they say, see the gate. Who am I you taking to, to go and cross, uh, get, enter and go and see Oma? 
and then uh, become, <laughs> become enemies. They went away. Following the incident, the president's own guard regiment was reorganized. Mr. Christian Blue and several other bodyguards were transferred from the Christian Ball Castle to the Pediasi Lodge as a result. 1965, that's all. There, they had to do the shovel, the, the, the security man, the top man. Less than a year later, in February 1966, Dr. Nkrumah was ousted while on a peace mission in Hanoi. Soon after, Mr. Bluku was also relieved of his job as a bodyguard. Years later, Christian's professional life took a nosedive. He returned to his hometown here in Adidome to do farming, to put food on the table for his family. After fishing, when we came on all hard to hear, we have to come, uh, come back by then. I prefer not this. I prefer what I say. This and that. See, we should come for one month. Pay. We went there that day, pay to if you had the old. I went there and make some chopping too. I want, well, we see a big a land here. I want to come back and then do farming. I don't bother in that. The senior citizen is troubled about the level of partisanship in the country. According to him, indiscipline in public service is gradually sinking the nation. Nkuma said there's a discipline. Now see what is happening. Nkuma, what happened? You know better my help you to come out of prison. Better my will help you. He play with Ghana money. He had to run away to work. Did uh, the better man finish the work with Nkuma? Because he played with what? Ghana's money. What is happening now? We are done you ball on all that. No, no, what was here? We are talking about your glove, I better tell her with that me. If you are doing a clue, I'm a doctor, did the clutter, boom me up as only. Then you bow with me, no. Then you bow with Bugger. I like a meal like a sick bugger one, no. You see now Ghana, it changed to be. Everybody take the tea to himself. Such a very touching story there. We'll take a break now for business, but still to come here. We have issues uh, from ECG, which uh, that is saying that they have been having challenges with some of their vending machines across the country. Stay with us for details. Hi, welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. President Kufado will, in November this year, launch the National Energy Transition Plan to provide what is believed to be clean, affordable, and reliable energy. Deputy Minister of Energy Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam says the plan is currently at its final stage for cabinet's approval. The plan will see the shift away from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources like wind and solar. The Deputy Minister spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the final report on the energy transition and critical minerals in Ghana by the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. Pius Kujubaka has more. Ghana is still a resource-dependent country with more than a quarter of its export earnings coming from oil and gas alone. Over the past decade, the oil sector has contributed around $6.5 billion of direct revenue to Ghana's budget. Without a plan to respond to the global energy transition, a significant decline in oil revenues could plunge Ghana into a deep crisis. To this end, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative has launched their final report on Ghana's critical minerals and energy transition with the aim of minimizing the risk associated with climate change whilst transitioning to renewable energy. Speaking to Joy Business on the sidelines of the launch of the report, Deputy Minister of Energy Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam stated that President Ikufado will in November this year launched the National Energy Transition Plan to provide what is believed to be clean, affordable and reliable energy in the country. The effect of the transition by other countries will affect us. And this is why we have to be proactive. And this is why government has been proactive in constituting a team and uh, uh, the team going around the country and consulting with our people so that we have a, a national plan uh, which can be owned by, by all the people of our country. We are finalizing the, the plan for cabinet consideration. 
uh, there are various options that we are putting on the table. But we want to look at the uh, most feasible, cost-effective, um, locally contextual, uh, contextualized uh, plan uh, that will meet our aspirations as a country. And um, we are very confident that by November, first, second week of November, uh, His Excellency the President will be, will be launching the, the energy transition plan. Now, the Bank of Ghana says it's open to having discussions with cryptocurrency and blockchain operators to design workable cryptocurrency law for the country. The announcement follows a growing number of operators, despite the central bank warning the public to stay away from such transactions since it is not yet regulated by it. Cryptocurrency is yet to be regulated in Ghana. Transactions on the platform is still used in the country. This has urged stakeholders in the sector to discuss regulatory issues with the Bank of Ghana. Speaking at the Africa Money and Decentralized Finance Summit in Accra, the head of FinTech and Innovation at the Bank of Ghana, Kwame Opong, said the aim of the central bank is to protect the financial economy by discussing issues on cryptocurrency with relevant stakeholders. Once again, I urge you all to, in your deliberation, seek to contextualize innovation to address the peculiar challenges of the Ghanaian ecosystem and by extension, those of the other emerging markets of which financial inclusion is key. It is by being altruistic that these laudable ends can be achieved. And of course, this will be a design challenge, and we hope it is also your ethos. On his part, the founder of Africa Tech Summit, the organizers of the event, Andrews Fisinge, said, Ghana cannot delay in adopting cryptocurrency operations since it is already one of the most active financial platforms across the world. It's like someone that's been going for nearly seven years. So we've, we head for our sixth edition in London in November. Uh, we do our, I think, uh, fifth edition in, in Nairobi in February. And we'll be back to Ghana uh, for the second edition of Africa Money and DeFi Summit next year as well. Um, what we found was the demand for year one has been been pretty uh, in, insane. Uh, we've sold out um, our first event here, so we'll be back to Ghana. All right, and that's business for now. Sports is coming up after this break. Good afternoon. Uh, time now to do sports. So enjoy news today with me, Muftar Nabila Abla, Black Stars head coach. Otto Ado says he was left impressed with his team's performance against Nicaragua on Tuesday evening. Ghana secured a narrow win over the Central Americans through Abdul Fatal Isahaku's left footed curled effort after 35 minutes into the game. Though he reckons his team could have won by a wider margin, he's satisfied with what he witnessed. Our style of play, we controlled the game. Mostly we created a lot of chances. I just had a look at it um, and we had like, the first of the good chances. Second half also nine, almost ten good chances, and uh, in all like six, seven very good chances. So I don't think um, you have to criticize this, uh, yeah, the using of the chances. So we have to score more. Um, this is clearly what we have to uh, where we have to improve. But uh, the rest was very good. We had a very good rest defense. Um, didn't allow any counters or any chances for the opponent. I think there was one corner. Um, so with the game as such, I'm satisfied, but surely we have to score more goals. And if that would be the case, I would, uh, I would, I would have called them. Surely there are some few players who are injured. Um, we, we, like I said before, we will still monitor players, we will still monitor all the players who were at camp this House of Oak supporters are divided following the decision of the club to sack its head coach, Samuel Boudou. This is according to supporters chairman, Hesse Herman. He says Boudou won the club a trophy and many fans would have wished he stayed. It's not been easy and let me state that um, the supporters at this moment are divided if you follow most of our social media platforms. Uh, some are of the view that the management or the board took the right decision in allowing the coach to go. Others are of the view that the coach should have remained or should have been given extra, extra more matches to play. 
So at the moment, the supporters are divided, uh, but uh, like I stated earlier, it's an emotional moment because Coach Samobudu, you know, made a difference after 10 years or after a decade, you know, since the, the current uh, majority shareholder that Toby Afede took over. He was the only coach that, that, that the supporters, you know, uh, started following because uh, under, under, under Coach Boydou, we started winning trophies. And it was something that we were lacking for so many years. That's your sports for now. But we do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com and also at 2 p.m. when we come your way with sports today. Up next is World News. Welcome back from the break. Now, prepaid meters of the electricity company of Ghana are currently facing technical challenges across the country, interrupting credit purchases and other services. The situation has left several customers stranded. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak to the general manager, external communication at ECD, Charles Ni Aiku. Uh, now, Charles, thank you so much for your time. What's the problem and what are you doing to resolve it? Yeah, thank you very much and good afternoon. Yes, yeah, so um, yesterday we identified some challenges with our IT system. Yes, so um, we try to work on it. Some of the systems or the metric systems were restored. But unfortunately, the issue came back again. But um, we must apologize to our cherished customers for this inconvenience. And we hope to get the system fully restored uh, very, very soon. All right. Thank you so much. I'm grateful that you could uh, join us uh, here. So let's uh, break and bring you showbiz now. Good afternoon. Welcome to showbiz here on Joy News. And now, Bulewa Mutu. Kana, best known by her stage name as Sahara, has arrived in the country ahead of her much-anticipated performance at this year's edition of Emmy Awards. In this interview, the South African singer and songwriter tells us all we need to know about her hit song, Lollywood, and more. It's all about the Emmy Awards and uh, performing live is, uh, well, let me try to mention the name right. Zahara. Thank you. Did I mention it right? Yes, it starts with the Z. Z. So, so, yeah. Welcome back home. So, for me, I was going to say, just give me the mic. Okay, let me do the honors. <laughs> This is home. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they must just get me. I'm still single, guys, now, by the way. But I came for the awards now. Maybe I might come back for marriage, you know? <laughs> So you must, somebody must just get me home. I always feel so loved when I'm here. I can't wait for the awards. Okay, tell me, because that's that's what we're we're, we're expecting a lot. Uh, this must be your first time performing um, in Ghana. And it's big, and it's on the Emmy stage. Uh, are, are you not freaking out a, a bit? What are your expectations? Let me tell you something. I am freaking out because everybody is expecting something. And I will be collaborating with, uh, say, Secret on stage. You're one of the Canadian artists. Okay. Yes, and I will try and sing in French. Your, your language, but it's a secret you will see on the day. Okay. But I will be with the live band. Uh, I'll be telling my story. This is what you be expecting. <laughs> I want to talk about Loliway, the train. 
Um, so we're in September. You released it um, somewhere in September, set of seven. Yeah, yes, yeah. So it's been like uh, a little I'm over ten years. I'm celebrating eleven years since Lolly. Yeah. Eleven years. I must. I, I might look young, but I'm old. <laughs> I'm older. So eleven years of Lolly Way. Uh, what impact has that song have had on your career as a whole? Um, like I always say, when I wrote Lolly Way. I finished my matric, we call it matric, um, um, if you call it standard, 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 ten, I don't know what you call it, but my parents, because my mother was a domestic worker and my father was working in peace jobs, so they, they, when I passed my matric, they didn't have money for me to go to tertiary, so I picked up a guitar and I played. I still don't know notes. I still don't know chords, but I can play any song. I write my own songs. I wanna play my own music. When I wrote Lolly, was well, the train, cause now my friend became my mother. My mother used to tell me stories about our forefathers and our fathers. They would go to Johannesburg, and then looking for jobs. Some of them they never came back, and some they they came back. But the whole Lolly was well, about me. It's all about my life. I write about my life story, my my struggles, till I am here. Wow. So the song. Is it a gospel song? Because people argue, yeah, one of the biggest songs in Ghana. We don't know whether it's a love song, a gospel song, but I mean, from the horses, it's, it's a life, it's a, not a, you can, whatever you call it. Do you know what gospel is? Gospel is good news. So if it gives you good news, that's gospel. It doesn't matter whether I did not say in the name of Jesus or a hallelujah, even if it was love, as long as a song it brings good news to you, that's gospel. But as Afro pop, I just tell my life story because I was, I grew up at church. That's what the pop has and So that means it's a metaphor for me. It means in English, Pezul in heaven. That's where all the holy people, the people that are work hard and they pray, they stay. So if you want to go there, you must pray. So I took it as a metaphor, as a journey in my life. If I want to achieve something, I must pray and I must work hard for it. Kojo Sobo, CEO of ME Africa War Sales Joy News, why they settled on South African Afro Soul Singer. Of Lolloway. Um, and I think that everybody, the song resonates with everyone. And ever since we started uh, promoting the show that she's coming to Ghana, I have a lot of people hitting me up and saying, I love her song. I don't understand the word of the music, but I love it. And um, she's going to be on Personality Profile on Thursday. That show has used your song for as a, as a sign-in tune yeah. for almost three or something years. Yeah. And every time the, the show is about to start, they play the music. So your music is loved here in Ghana, and she is a fantastic performer. That's more showbiz news in our subsequent bulletins. My name is Becky. Over to you, Grace. Good afternoon. Oh, so lonely way. Is that how it is? Well, anyway, don't be surprised. I mean, that's what I heard, and that's what I'm telling you. And that's how we wrap up today's bulletin. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Up next this marketplace. Good afternoon. Zololuwe. Don't sing. Zololuwe. <laughs>